for all our viewers followers and investors from the golden pie community a very warm welcome to all of you i am abhijit roy co-founder and ceo of golden pie india's leading online platform for all your fixed income investments so this is the 14th episode from our industry speak series and for a first time viewers let me give you a bit of a background about what is this series about right here we invite the rising stars or the behemoths or the trailblazers from the finance industry we get into a very deep dive discussion with their founders the cxos and understand about their business landscape the growth that they have you know uh, the struggles that they're encountering and in a way understand how they're impacting the financial landscape of our country for a repeat viewers you'll realize that in this episode we are back for the second time right with an nbfc and simply because of the reason you know it's a very rare occasion uh, this is the first time we are back with the same nbfc in an episode and the reason behind this is this nbfc actually has been growing at a mind boggling pace since the last time we did an episode it's disrupting the nbfc landscape with cutting edge technology right and it is spearheaded by none other than the og of our startup ecosystem mr sachin bansal ladies and gentlemen we are back on this episode with navi finsurf our favorite organization or favorite institution of discussion today with us we have mr shobhit agarwal who is the head of lending and borrowing at navi shobhit has got a very rich industry experience of over 15 years in pure financial land uh, space and uh, you know he has worked across corporate banking acquisitions private equity to name a few prior to navi shobhit uh, headed uh, leadership uh, positions in organizations such as standard chartered bank and deutsche bank shobhit a very warm welcome to you for in this episode thanks abhijit for the kind introduction and it's always a pleasure to be back on uh, golden pies uh, you know uh, conference our viewers would be looking forward to learning more about you know navi and how the you know growth landscape has been for this institution and just a little bit of interesting trivia for our viewers right this episode is also going to give you a lot of key information which helps you in your investment possibilities navi we'll get to that slightly later during the discussions right so let's begin shobhit sure abhijit let's start you know the last time we had a very deep dive discussion with sachin and you i remember some of the top level metrics right which was very impressive about the company i think it was uh, 7600 crores of aum at that point of time uh, a million loans already disbursed 0.3% of net np one of the lowest delinquencies in the whole industry you also had got a credit upgrade at that point of time from crisel to a stable rating right and you were disrupting the nbfc landscape with technology which was being used you know to process data and mine data in other industries you were the pioneers as far as i remember to bring it into the nbfc landscape right that was a very impressive story but we are back here to hear all the more you know impressive stuff that navi has done right so how has navi transformed you know or moved ahead from that stage to today as we speak if you could shed some light on this sure abhijit um just before you know i i start uh, the gap between our first two public issuances was around 14 months and now the third one is coming uh, within a gap of 8 months so we are able to reduce the you know time between uh, you know two subsequent issuances but still we have a lot to talk about uh, in terms of our progress our uh, aum crossed uh, 10000 crore on a managed basis uh, in december so that's uh, that's, uh, that's that's a healthy growth that, uh, from you know, uh, from the last time we we yeah, met um our um, net npas are around 0.35 percentage and it's kind of maintained at the same level uh, this is a result of uh, prudent uh, risk management solid underwriting and uh, carrying enough provisions uh, in our uh, balance sheet 
um the significant event that has happened at navi groups end is the sell of our uh, microfinance business um uh, navi group was holding 100% in chaitanya 75% of it was held by navi finserve and 25% by its parent company so we completely exited that business on a cash deal basis and we received 1500 odd crore cash uh, at a group level and 75% of it came in uh, navi finserve so this has really boosted our uh, capital adequacy it has brought our debt equity ratio to 2.2x and uh, and increased our net worth to 2800 crore plus so this gives us enough ammunition in this current market to grow and capture more of uh, market share and and we'll talk about uh, some of the uh, you know tailwinds that we are seeing in this business for navi as well as headwinds let's say for uh, for the industry and um, yeah so as we speak our aum stands at 10000 crore plus uh, profitability is intact uh, in fact it got a big boost from sale of chatanya we uh, we have 600 crore plus uh, net profit uh, for the first 9 months of this um, uh, financial year debt equity is very low at 2.2x and uh, net npa is around uh, 0.36 percentage so all in all uh, business has been uh, fantastic understandably so the statistics speak for themselves now uh, you know uh, if we have to understand from this top level perspective to the operating business of navi at least for you know uh, the first time viewers and also to you know the jog the memory of the repeat viewers and investors right um, we would want to know uh, the operating model of navi i mean from a very top level perspective like how do you source funds then how do you source the buyers uh, the borrowers sorry and then you know how do you do the credit assessment for them then the disbursal process and then you know collection of the interest payments and the principal post maturity of the loans right i mean how is this whole process constructed and maybe some key metrics around this for the benefit of our viewers sure abhijit um Abhijit, any lending business is built around uh, five basic pillars. Uh, number one, sourcing. How do you source customers? Uh, some uh, some institutions will have branches, capex, uh, and some like us will have uh, app. Then uh, second pillar is underwriting. That uh, when customers walk into your uh, area, how do you underwrite them? How you know? How do you approve? Uh, how do you reject uh, customers? third is uh, how do you fund this business how do you raise equity capital how do you raise uh, debt capital fourth is collections uh, this is a business where you make uh, money when you collect your last two emis and uh, uh, collection is probably the most important thing uh, out of the four things and fifth is the risk management uh, in overall uh, way you conduct yourself either it's asset liability management or it's uh, solvency or it's uh, liquidity you know uh, and 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 overall uh, you know credit risk management so if i talk about a little bit in detail uh, navi has uh, now reduced its uh, dependence on uh, on giants like google and facebook to acquire customers today majority of our fresh business is coming uh, on an organic basis and we have also started uh, cross selling uh, at a large scale to customers coming on to navi app for our other products Uh, that has reduced our uh, customer acquisition cost uh, significantly mm. at a group level and at uh, nfs level so that's on the sourcing part uh, underwriting is uh, is going pretty strong uh, we have been pretty selective about the credit that we roll out uh, especially you know um, in a segment which is new to credit or let's say less than 50000 uh, ticket size which is uh, deemed to be riskier in the current environment and um, and given whatever is happening in the industry we have a influx of traffic uh, or customers to which can which allows us to be which allows us to be more selective about who we give loan to and still maintain the uh, growth on the funding side we are seeing a huge uh, tailwinds um, we are seeing that a lot of our partners prefer to uh, you know uh, fund navi or partner with navi because there is uh, a flight towards quality uh, smaller players are finding it difficult to raise money at competitive rates and this is giving advantage to uh, to us and uh, it's a classic situation where uh, you know strong players get uh, stronger uh, if you if you behave properly 
on the collection side we are uh, going through a major transformation phase where uh, we are setting up uh, our own field collection infrastructure i think which sachin talked about in the last uh, discussion as well we made great deal of progress there uh, almost 25% of our aum uh, on field gets collected by in house agents and plan is to uh, increase the roll out uh, over next 6 to 12 months time and uh, overall risk management has been uh, pretty fine uh, as i said you know we are running on a very high capital adequacy low debt equity high you know a positive a positive management on the alm side and overall risk management has been uh, pretty robust and it's also uh, driven uh, by uh, by rbi all as well uh, you know directly indirectly given the importance uh, of it in any lending business particularly unsecured lending in current times so so yeah uh, we have made progress on all these five parameters uh, in last 6 7 months uh, on a significant basis understood uh, so just to recap uh, you laid out a, a very nicely the overall construct of an nbfc business one was uh, i think you mentioned uh, sourcing uh, of borrowers underwriting them understanding whether they are worthy of being given a loan or not then you mentioned about how to source funds to lend to them then you talked about collections and then you talked about uh, briefly on risk management i think we will you know double click on that one later on in this discussion because that be a very interesting piece um, given that there's a lot of noise around rbi yeah. and you know the regulatory changes that they're bringing on the nbfcs right and um, for the good of the overall market right um you know um, business has grown significantly for navi and 10000 crores of aum is what milestone you have hit in december right um basic question that would come to the mind of anybody is um that means a borrower is uh, actively looking for a loan and is preferring navi right over a host of other you know lenders that might be there in the market right so it will be very interesting to understand what be the this borrower profile or the customer profile that navi has number one and number two is uh, why would they prefer you know navi over other nbfcs sure uh, it's a very you know uh, it's a question which we get quite often um so, so the best part is that navi's customer profile has remained consistent either it was 2000 crore aum or 7000 or 10000 crore aum today um you know 100% of our customers would have bank account uh, because we do penny drop and the bank distribution of our customer would represent the country's uh, bank account distribution for example if sbi bank has 25% market share then uh, within our customer base 25% of these guys will have a bank account with sbi more than 70% of our customers would have active credit card which means that they would have an option to take loan from banks uh, if they want uh, 90% of our customers are uh, civil score uh, 725 plus which is a prime category around 1% is new to credit and uh, you know 90% of our customers are 25 to 40 years of age which is a young population <coughs> Uh, 70% of our customers would be outside top 10 cities so basically we are catering to urban semi urban young middle class population uh, two third of our customers would have uh, would be lying in a middle income bracket which is let's say household income between 5 lakhs to 15 lakhs and uh, and uh, these are uh, digital savvy uh, customers so that profile has remained consistent uh, as we have grown our aum which talks about the getting criteria that we have uh, you know on the on the underwriting side so the and uh, why do customers prefer navi uh, it's a simple uh, you know uh, thing uh, the reason why we are finding that product market fit is that customers uh, in this new age prefer uh, you know uh, simple ways to get things done uh, today you know so many customers use swiggy zomato because uh, it just ways too simple uh, you know to cater to their daily requirement customers can take loans in uh, you know in 4 to 5 minutes uh, when they come to navi uh, without talking to anyone without uh, uploading any paper document so we cut through barriers of language uh, hesitation physical uh, you know movement so all those things help 
and then uh, navi is uh, is a low cost lender uh, in in the in let's say in the fintech world uh, we don't charge processing fees as of now we don't have foreclosure charges we don't attach insurance so the landed cost is uh, extremely economical for our customers uh, and uh, and that shows uh, you know why we are able to convert so many bank uh bank customers uh, you know uh, for our uh, portfolio so th- these are the broad reasons you know uh, low landed cost convenience basically high value for money uh, because of which we are able to you know uh, do business at scale got it i take a few cues from uh, uh you know uh the picture that you put it as to why customers prefer navi you know to take their loans one important thing which you mentioned i, I think um, it it would be um, straight understanding for anybody that without interfacing with anybody um, a borrower can uh, an eligible borrower can get a loan disbursed in 4 to 5 minutes um, through the text stack that you have right uh, more on that later but uh, you know just going back you know uh, to one point that you mentioned before 25% of your aum collection actually happens via the field agents right um, and we understand that collection like you rightly mentioned is one of the key pieces of running the business effectively and profitably right so how are you managing this you know this whole collection game and are there any risks which you have cleverly mitigated using technology using superior process and controls uh yes abhijit so uh, see everybody knows that you know collection is uh, extremely important uh but uh, you know when uh, all your money is into this business uh, then you think differently uh, right when all your money is the risk capital then you think differently and uh, that's how sachin thinks about this business day in and day night um so you know uh, what we found when we were working with third party agencies is that there is uh, you know there there are lot, there were a lot of gaps uh, in terms of the information that you get in terms of the you know uh, malpractices that happen uh, uh, on the on the EMI date and uh, with this whole thought process uh, we decided to roll out uh, you know our own uh, um, agents and and the results were uh, very surprising for us uh, it was cost effective for us and uh, they were showing better collection efficiency you know in the field so uh, navi is a classical uh, navi is a wonderful case of a very good mix of digital as well as uh, field presence uh, when it comes to uh, you know personal loans or unsecured uh, lending uh, we use uh, you know uh, chat gpt4 powered uh, chatbots uh, it's it's a two way chatbot which converses with the uh, customers in any language uh, in which they want uh, it, it it's very contextual it can uh, uh, and it's available 24/7 and uh, today these chatbots are doing a better job than humans in terms of uh, reminder calling giving nudges and uh, doing collections in a, in a software bucket let's say from day 0 to day 7 uh, and then we have a large uh, a uh, telecalling team of around 400 uh, agents uh, who should so sit out of uh, our bangalore office and uh, they they primarily focus on collections t- up to uh, d30 and uh, post which it goes to the field and uh, that's where we are uh, powering our field agents with uh, our own built in house built app uh, which uh, which uh, does route optimization for them it gives them a complete client disposition available to them and you know how to approach clients you know uh, everything that they need is available on on our in-house app and we are already receiving feedback that this is uh, this app is better than uh, let's say third party apps or some of the bank apps that is already available in the market so so training our own agents uh, powering them uh, with uh, with our own in-house built uh, app uh is just doing wonders for uh, our business and uh, uh, yeah and and there's lot more to do uh, in collections uh, you know while we roll it out got it got it so the next question that I was going to ask pretty much merges with this context you know um 
the four to five minutes of time taken for disbursal of the loan, right? The extreme ease of operation, right? Uh, customer centricity of the app uh, for the borrower, right? And then this different dimension that we are knowing today about this whole collection system that you have set up one you haven't outsourced it you have kept it in-house and it has actually given wonderful results to you number two you you are using all the latest technology chat gpt four version right uh, which is continuously giving nudges or reminders till day seven like you mentioned to your borrowers and post that it goes to your you know calling agents till day 30 and then post that to the field agents where they interact with the customers, go down to the locations via route optimization, all that. That brings me, you know, to the most, uh, you know, exciting part about Navi and that is usage of cutting edge technology, right? So let's try and understand this tech stack that you have, right? What are the, you know, these key things that you have built and what are the big problems that this tech enables you to solve so differently from probably 99% of the other NBFCs who are there in the market and probably there for over, you know, hundreds of years. Yeah, I'll try to answer it a little differently. I'm, I'm not a techie, but uh, what I see uh, in Navi is that uh, tech is in the DNA. Uh, it's about the culture, right? Uh, how much can you push yourself uh, and what kind of hard constraints you can put yourself to do things uh, digitally? Uh, that's a simple question which every organization should uh, ask themselves uh, if, if they uh, want to be tech focused. And this is something which uh, I see day in and day out uh, in Navi, uh, you know, and uh, there are always, uh, you know, this, uh, these discussions around build versus buy and uh, what principles govern, uh, you know, those decisions in Navi. I see, I see it almost on a daily basis. So we want to, uh, uh, Sachin was very clear, to deliver superior customer experience, you need to own the complete stack, uh, right? So we built uh, to start with our own loan origination system, loan management system. Those were the basic things. And now we have built so many things on uh, top of it because that gives us this uh, flexibility and agility, you know, uh, to, uh, to tailor our, uh, you know, uh, product uh, to customer's requirement. Right. Uh, so, uh, and and we are constantly, you know, uh, building things uh, which uh, uh, which which makes us more, uh, you know, productive. I'll give you some examples. Uh, like we have uh, we have our own uh, Riven, uh, which is uh, you know communication tools, and uh, we are able to send a lot of messages, uh, you know, out of that uh, uh, platform, which we have built uh, completely in house. Um, SMS scraping, uh, we were using earlier third party services. Now we have built our own uh, tool, which is able to create financial ledger in a much, much better uh, format. Uh, the fill rates are high. The accuracy of that uh, system is uh, much better, right? Similarly, I talked about the app that we have built for our collections team. Uh, we internally, we call it Cosmos. And uh, that is something which is again, uh, built, um, you know, uh, uh, built from scratch. Then another platform which we built for our institutional partners is called Navi Lending Cloud. Uh, this is where they can log in and they can select the pool that they want to buy from us. They can make adjustments to their rule engines when they are doing co-lending with us. They can do their due diligence, monitor portfolio, uh, whole uh, you know a uh, lot of things that they can do on the Navi Lending Cloud, and that makes uh, their life easier and the turnaround time uh, much shorter. So, so we have built many such tools, uh, you know, uh, within Navi instead of uh, buying them out. And uh, that has helped us uh, in scaling with uh, less effort compared to, let's say, someone else. So when you say that we have moved from 7,500 to 10,000, honestly, it was, uh, it was a little bit push. It, it's not, it's not uh, very hard, uh, you know, uh, when you have systems like this to support the kind of growth that you want. Even even for our uh, borrowings, uh, you know, we could have bought off the shelf product, but we built our own system, which talks to our, uh, uh, you know, uh, finance system and uh, which is which is very easy to use. Uh, they are able to allocate receivables uh, to the borrowings uh, with, within a minute, uh, you know, when you press a button. So all those things uh, have made us, uh, you know, uh, very efficient. So basically, almost from the conversation that I understand, literally all pieces 
of uh, the process as i may say to run the organization is built in house right and that has been built of superior quality which gives you this enormous amount of speed and power to scale up from like 7500 crores last time 7600 crores odd last time which was like few months back i think i mean two three quarters back right till yeah. uh, today which is like over 10000 crores right yeah understanding shows the power of technology and how navi is being being able to use it effectively which i'm sure would be powered by a a very strong technical engineering team that you would have in house yes and also abhijit if i can just add we are building for scale uh, you know when we build these things we don't think about going from 10000 to 12000 we are building as if you know when when we will manage 1 lakh crore of aum uh, what kind of systems or what kind of infrastructure we would we would want so decisions that we take are on a very long term basis and that i think improves really improves the quality of the decisions uh, and uh, uh, building you know own systems having uh, the full stack uh, in house are uh, stemming from that uh, thought process cool uh, you mentioned about navi uh, uh, lending cloud right what is this if you could explain <coughs> in slightly more details and uh, what part of the business does this contribute to yeah bijit uh so you know uh, to grow in this business uh, liabilities are very important and there is a limit to which uh, you know you can uh, raise uh, on balance sheet liability and also you want to operate at not very high leverage so one of the things that is now available to everyone is uh, co lending where uh, you know you partner with uh, larger uh, institutions uh, who who are keen to increase their aum uh, increased uh, you know keen to uh, basically part of india's uh, you know growth story and uh, you are good at origination you are good at underwriting you are good at collections so it, it's a, it's a good combination of uh, somebody having deep balance sheet uh, and uh, somebody having you know a lot of other the, other these things so um, so today around uh, 30% of our uh, monthly disbursals uh, come through co lending arrangements and that co lending is you know powered by navi lending cloud uh, which uh, uh, which helps them in uh, you know coding their uh, rule engine uh, you know allocation of loans then uh, proportionate uh, disbursal from escrow account then collections and everything uh, whatever is needed by our co lending partners that gets done through uh, navi lending cloud and uh, navi lending cloud we are also doing direct assignments which is sell of portfolio uh, through that platform and now we have started recently doing uh, uh, 180 dpd uh, sale of portfolio to arcs uh, and that is also powered by navi lending cloud it just helps uh, in the due diligence monitoring of the portfolio and lot of other things in a very efficient manner understood lot of technical terms used over there but what i understand is it powers your co lending business so yes. somebody who wants to co lend with you be it another nbfc or another bank they would use your this uh, lending cloud platform select the set of buyers you know um, the portfolio that they would want to you know go into use their own due diligence and put in their funds along with you right exactly. at the same time if they want to buy of some portfolio of your books that's also something they can actually pick and choose from there Understood. Understood. Now, um, let's move on to understand um, about the financials of the company. Right? For our viewers, um, uh, can you share about the financials of Navi? How it stands as of now? Like revenue and PAT would be, you know, uh, the main things to look at. And then you have already spoken about an in net NPA, which is around point three five percent, right? So, uh, yeah. if you can share uh, around these two parameters of revenue and pat <coughs> sure um so uh, if if we look at the pnl uh, nine months revenue is around uh, 1200 crores uh, last year full year revenue was around 1100 crores so if we assume that the growth is going to be consistent then we are looking at closing the year with uh, 1400 1500 crore of revenue that's around 30 35% jump uh, from uh, previous year 
दिस ईयर वी हैव पैट ऑफ अराउंड सिक्स ट्वेंटी करोड्स फॉर द फर्स्ट नाइन मंथ्स इट इंक्लूड्स वन टाइम प्रॉफिट फ्रॉम सेल ऑफ चैतन्य एंड इफ यू रिमूव दैट देन वी हैव ऑपरेशनल प्रॉफिट आफ्टर टैक्स ऑफ अराउंड एटी फाइव करोड्स दिस इज ऑल्सो बेटर देन लास्ट ईयर नंबर एंड वी आर वेरी कॉन्फिडेंट दैट वी विल क्लोज द फुल ईयर विद अ वेरी हाई ऑपरेशनल प्रॉफिट आफ्टर टैक्स नंबर एज वेल एंड ऑफकोर्स यू नो सेल वन टाइम प्रॉफिट फ्रॉम सेल of chatanya is a cherry on top um our debt equity has uh, reduced because of uh, you know because of uh, chatanya's uh, cash and it's now at 2.2x so we are uh, it's an under lever under levered uh, balance sheet uh, rbi has increased risk weights uh, for unsecured lending in the month of november and after that also our capital adequacy stands very high at uh, 27% so it's a very healthy balance sheet a very strong balance sheet which is also attracting lot of uh, debt capital because uh, not too many players uh, have those kind of uh, you know improved the uh, numbers uh, after november and uh, operationally we are doing uh, obviously better quarter on quarter um, we are having growth our asset quality is stable our operational efficiencies are kicking in which is showing into the you know uh, operating profit so uh, all in all uh, we are in a good sp- uh, good spot and uh, but uh, focus is on risk management and making sure that the asset quality keeps improving uh, from here because uh, yeah market can uh, get tougher got it got it so uh, you know uh, just to recap uh, what you mentioned around the financials for our viewers uh, the projected revenue collection uh, end of this financial year fy24 uh would be around 1500 crores a jump of around 35% from that of the last fy and you have a pat of around 620 crores uh, where some amount of contribution has come in from the sale of chaitanya yes your debt to equity ratio stands at 2.2x which i believe is way lower than what is actually you know can be done i mean you are much under leveraged over here you can actually raise way more debt than you know uh, than what you have which means the uh, possibilities of scaling right and increasing the aum is tremendous over there mm, and uh, i think you also mentioned your capital adequacy ratio stands at uh, 27 28 27% right yeah net worth the rbi yeah. guidelines is 15% is what is to be maintained you have maintained way more than that right yeah. so overall in very good financial you know position but but that you know uh, might be a very interesting lesson for a lot of our viewers over here and even for entities who are you know wanting to start up an nbfc business or or any business for that fact right what would be the top two or three key levers that you have moved correctly which has helped you you know in maintaining and building up these financials in such a good shape um so capital adequacy debt equity net worth it's a direct function of uh, the strategic decision that we have taken to divest uh, chatanya uh, three quarters back and uh, it uh, fructified in the month of november uh, it was a strategic decision because we wanted to concentrate on digital play and uh, and they chatanya were more of a physical play they were more of manual you know dispersal yeah. and collections exactly so so lot of balance sheet strength is uh, stemming from uh, that fact and uh, operational uh, you know um, improvement is uh, yeah so see we uh, operational leverage is kicking in as as we are scaling up uh, you know our aum has grown from uh, you know whatever uh, 6 or 1000 to now 10000 crores so that is uh, that is helping us in optimizing on our uh, fixed cost then uh, as i said we are very selective about our uh, credit uh, you know uh, uh, off take and uh, our approval rates we have reduced uh, you know in last 3 uh, 4 months and that is keeping the quality pristine uh, for the portfolio and then uh, our customer acquisition cost has dropped uh, significantly um, because of repeat share increasing in our uh, customer base second we have got an uh, you know efficient uh, in terms of how do we acquire customers we have reduced our reliance on google and facebook uh, and uh, of course there are tailwinds uh, you know uh, we have had uh, some uh, large players uh, you know who are not originating now uh, loans uh, in this category 
and also there is crackdown of uh, illegal uh, lending apps uh, which is also you know kind of reducing the supply of uh, capital plus uh, rbi's action on risk weightage and all those things uh, have certainly reduced uh, you know supply of capital in the market uh, to this segment and this is bringing in uh, more customers because demand is intact uh, uh, to our shop right. and uh, and uh, yeah and that that's playing out well so uh, from here going forward if we, uh, our eyes focus is on uh, credit uh, if we can keep that uh, consistent or we can better that then uh, then yeah we will uh, we will make a uh, uh, lot more money and uh, yeah business will get more efficient right 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 and um, i think all the cards are being played very well um, one key learning for me over here is one uh, that strategic decision you know uh, the like which you mentioned uh, in one of my response to my earlier questions that technology running a technology driven business is in the dna of the company right and you have straight stayed true to that with taking the action of letting go of chaitanya because the dna of that company was more into physical uh, you know mode of operation and you are totally digital so i mean i think that's a very deep learning for anybody um, you know it's basically walking the talk for a particular company that we are digital and yes we believe it by taking this hard decision right to actually let go of a portion um, of an entity which was not digital right so great on that now let's move on to the most interesting part of the discussion which i i believe all of our viewers are actually waiting to hear so navi is uh, going for his next ncd ipo issuance which starts from 26th of february which is next monday so the question to you show with this how much money is navi raising over here and what will this be used for yes abhijit uh this is our third issuance and uh, this time you know uh, so i'll tell you in the second issuance we received 380 crore subscription on day 1 and uh, the whole issue including green shoe was subscribed in 4 days time uh, so there was tremendous response and uh, bulk of the money two third of the money came from hni retail category and in the longer tenor buckets so we decided that that one and only that we will bring our third issuance quickly and this is the um, this is the earliest that we could manage in 7 8 months time and we promise that next time uh, it will be even shorter and this time we have tried to push the envelope uh, it's a slightly bigger issuance uh, it's a 300 crore base plus 300 crore uh, green shoe these are secured uh, uh, you know non convertible redeemable uh, debentures okay uh, they're offering and uh, yeah and we will talk about uh, uh, the structure uh, or the you know structure of, of this uh, issuance also in some time sure um and uh, what is the highest rate that an investor can get in over here in this issue sure uh, so abhijit uh, uh, it has five options uh, three okay. tenor options 18 months uh, 27 months and uh, 36 months okay uh, 18 months has a monthly coupon and uh, 27 and 36 months have a monthly coupon as well as uh, annual uh, coupon okay right uh, so uh, so the lowest interest rate uh, that you can get is around 10.47 percentage uh, in terms of yield and the highest uh, this is obviously in the 18 month uh, bucket and the highest that you can get is around 11.19 percentage uh, this is uh, in the 27th uh, month bucket these uh, bonds will be listed on uh, both exchanges and uh, you can trade there is decent liquidity in the, in the paper and uh, yeah and everything else is uh, same the, the, the structure is uh, issue structure is uh, exactly similar to last time got it got it i think it's a very very simple structure easy to understand easy to invest for our viewers i'll just summarize so navi is raising 300 overall the attempt is to raise 600 crores of which 300 crores is the base issue option and the remaining 300 crores is in the green shoe option and uh, you know retail investors can invest as low as 10000 uh, completely digitally through the upi route right uh, three tenures are there uh, 18 months 27 months and 36 months 18 months has got monthly payout option 27 months and 36 have got monthly and annual payout options right very simple to understand 
you know yeah. the lowest that you get over here is 10.47% from that 18 months tenure right which according to my understanding is pretty much on the higher side and and the highest that you can get is 11.19 percentage right uh, and there are other you know interest returns in between of the various other combinations that's there and what is the credit rating for this paper credit rating is uh, a stable uh, by grisel uh, this is the rating this is the same rating that uh, was there in the last uh, issuance as well some seven months or yeah it's seven yes. months seven eight months back yeah yeah okay. so the credit rating is uh, uh, a plus stable um, a, a, a stable so yes. the credit rating is a stable by crisel yeah and uh, like i mentioned it's opening on 26th of february uh, next monday uh, open to retail and i'm sure you know the you will see tremendous amount of interest from you know from the market participants over here from retail hni qib and institutions yeah let's hope so uh, no matter how much you prepare for it there will always be butterflies on the opening day absolutely absolutely it never changes it's always the you know that feeling always persists yeah is there any option of an early closure over here in this uh, yes in uh, yeah uh, issuer always reserves right uh, to close it uh, earlier uh, by giving one day notice so depending on uh, uh, on the response on the subscription figures on the retail hni side uh, we will take a call right right so you know viewers um, the early closure option means that if a company is able to raise the requisite amount that they're looking for right in a period shorter than what they had initially thought of keeping it open then the company reserves the right with one day's notice to close off the issue i think this is exactly what happened last time also right i mean within four days it was uh, you know beyond your uh, amount that we're looking to raise so you had to go for an early closure so um, one cue for interested investors is to go ahead as soon as possible lest uh, you know um, subscription completely is filled up and uh, you know it's it's closed yeah so i think th th this is uh, you know the last question from my side more of a, a futuristic global question and closure question um, and that is what is the vision for navi going ahead right not at the operational level not at the strategic level but at the vision level right i are you going to expand into new geographies are you going to open up you know new verticals of business or are you going to transform into you know an even bigger entity with uh, you know with uh, more power uh, you know under your belt how is it so abhijit uh, navi is already a pan india player uh right and uh, india is uh, where uh, we will probably you know focus or concentrate for next two decades uh vision is simple to make financial services uh, simple affordable and accessible to 1 billion indians and uh, to cater to their requirements uh, we started with uh, a lending business which is the most scaled up uh, we have personal loan housing loan uh, we have our own amc uh, you know health insurance and now we are going to launch uh, upi payments uh, so uh, so slowly you know uh, we are covering this uh, range uh, upi payments cater to customers requirement on a daily basis and there is a home loan which has a life cycle of uh, 20 years so so we are uh, you know we are almost uh, uh, at the two ends of the coverage customer coverage and then there are so many requirements uh, so many uh, you know uh, products that you can offer to customers in in between uh, which we will uh, keep adding uh, you know uh, as we grow and uh, yeah we want to offer uh, you know uh, everything in very simple terms uh, to our customers at 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 lower cost basically working without intermediaries making it simple uh, you know decluttered without jargons and all those things so it's a very simple vision a uh, very long timeline in the sense horizon uh, to uh, you know to uh, achieve that uh, which uh, b improves uh, quality of our decision making on a on a regular basis fantastic so thank you shobhit thank you for you know this uh, you know very insightful deep dive discussion um, i'm sure 
all our viewers um, will enjoy learning about navi the way the organization is metamorphosing into a behemoth right into the nbfc landscape you already are a behemoth you are growing larger powered by technology all the right set of moves and all the very best to you for the fundraise i'm sure you know uh, you, you you will hit hit a boundary over here thank you abhijit and always a pleasure to uh, to be guest on uh, you know uh, on golden pie and uh, best of luck thank you so much thanks for your time shobhit and thanks to all our viewers thank you investments in debt securities municipal debt securities securitized debt instruments are subject to risks including delay and or default in payment read all the offer related documents carefully